Middle and junior high school students are often avid computer users who jump at the chance to get their hands on a keyboard, even if it's only at school. This eagerness can be a great tool for you to use to reach students in innovative and exciting ways. Some of the main types of technology you'll come into contact with at school are software, hardware, and the Internet. We're going to look at examples of each of these types of technology. Let's start with hardware, which can be anything from a radio to an overhead projector. One of the more obvious examples of hardware is a computer, but there are several other useful tools. For example, students can use a personal audiobook reader with headphones to listen to an audiobook version of their textbook. You might also use a video or DVD player to show a recorded event, such as a documentary about how the Renaissance period affected art and culture in Italy. If you're studying modern Italy, you could show recordings of news broadcasts reporting on Italian current events, such as natural disasters or elections. You can use an LCD projector to display images of artwork and architecture from 17th century France and then evaluate how they reflected ongoing changes in culture and religion. You might also project a map of France using an overhead projector. Then, using an erasable marker, you can mark on the map the locations of the major cathedrals and castles and explain to students how important they were to nearby cities. Before we go any further, let's review what we've learned so far. Answer this question and then click Next to learn about more ways you can use hardware in your classroom. For a more exciting change of pace, you can have students create a mock news broadcast about an important event in history, like the French Revolution or the Battle of Hastings. To make learning even more interactive, you can assign a trustworthy student as a cinematographer. Now let's move on to software, which goes hand in hand with hardware. You'll find many uses for applications such as those from the Microsoft Office system. For example, you could use a word processor application, such as Microsoft Office Word, to create a test on German history. Simply type your questions with the answer choices. You might include multiple choice, matching, and short answer essay questions. You could use a presentation program, such as Microsoft Office PowerPoint, to create a slideshow to accompany a lecture about the destruction of the Berlin Wall. Your slideshow might contain slides with text, pictures of the wall before and during the destruction, and audio recordings of eyewitness accounts. Or you could create a spreadsheet comparing the populations of East and West Germany. You could use census information to compare the number of people, per capita income, number of families and number of children, and employment rate. You could use this spreadsheet to compare the quality of life on each side of the Berlin Wall and then discuss how things changed after the wall fell. It's time to review again. Let's take a moment to think about how you can apply what you've learned in your classes. In the space provided, list some ideas for a specific unit you have coming up. When you're ready to move on, click Next. Another way to use software in the classroom is to have students evaluate their knowledge about a topic using a graphic organizer, such as a SQR3, which stands for Survey, Question, Read, Recite, and Review. This is a great tool to give students when they are reading a long textbook passage, especially when it covers new information. If desired, they can enter the information into the computer and print a copy to use for reviewing later. 
If you're teaching geography, you might also have students play a game such as Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? Travel the World with Timmy or GeoCycle USA. Games are also available at many websites. Use a search engine such as Google.com to locate games that relate to your lessons. Finally, let's explore how you can use the Internet in your classroom. The possibilities are endless. You can do everything from performing searches to finding ideas for lesson plans online. Discussion boards are also a great way to communicate with other teachers. You can share ideas and teaching strategies with educators around the world. Students can also use discussion boards to share their thoughts and gain other students' perspectives on current events, such as a war or a natural disaster. Now, think about how you could use a discussion board to communicate with other educators. In the space provided, list some examples of topics or questions you might have, using Tab to move to a new line. Click Next to move on when you're ready. There are also chat rooms available that allow your students to communicate with other students around the world or in their hometown. You can use a site such as kidlink.org to locate chat partners from a country you're studying, such as Ireland. Students can then exchange information about their culture, religion, or education with their chat partner. Students can also use search engines such as yahooligans.com to perform research, such as for a paper at the end of a unit on Switzerland. Then they can visit a site like mapquest.com to generate maps of Europe and Switzerland that could be included with the paper. As you can see, the possibilities for integrating technology in your classroom are limitless, and we've only provided a few examples. Take some time to think about how they could be applied to lessons in your classroom to enhance your teaching and your students' learning. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in a classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid.